Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Paul, U.S. Army Combat Veteran, and today we are going to be answering one of the most important philosophical questions of all. What's up with these bots in TF2? Anyway, let's get into it. Also, do me a favor, guys. I have this dream of hitting 100,000 subs, and if you guys are fans and you haven't hit subscribe, do please do so. It's free, and it doesn't mean you're going to see every single video I make. They'll still just show you the ones that you're into. But YouTube will send me a cool silver plaque, and I get to put it on my wall and prove to my wife that this is a real job. Okay, thanks. Whoa, big... Oh, there we go. Man kicked by bot. This is how Skynet started, by the way. Uh, this is how it started. It just tested out apocalypsing all the humans by apocalypsing all the human players in a game. <clears throat> Ooh, no intro. That, that's how you know this is serious. There's not really going to be anything fancy in this video. This is really just to get an idea out there. And this is a video that I was thinking about making for a while. In fact, it's been so long that I made the thumbnail for this video over a year ago. As of, I think, April, the bot problem in TF2 has been going on for two full years now. And the bots are something that I've only mentioned once or twice in passing on this channel. I, I've kind of avoided the subject because what else is there to say anymore? Everyone knows it's an issue and everybody's sick of it. But what can we do about it? Sh okay, I want to point something out here. You may not know this, but this background music he's using in this video, it's the theme from Time Splitters 2. Maybe the greatest FPS of all time. Sure, community servers are nice. If you have played TF2 on the old PlayStation, and let me know in the comments. But it's not the same. That's not how the overwhelming majority of people play this game. I'll tell you what we can do, me and you. What we can do is absolutely nothing. This is entirely 100% on Valve as a company. They're the only people who could stop it. That's it. But Valve has never- Yeah, this is, this is actually one of the things that I think more people need to understand is that Probably, you, the average person, did nothing to build the world that we live in. Like, truly. There's a certain philosophy uh, that extremists love to subscribe to, in which they say, well, technically, if every single person rose up in mass, they could overthrow the system. And therefore, the fact that they haven't done that is them supporting the system in its entirety and it ignores the fact that basically every single person is trying to survive right like you you gotta eat man you gotta eat you gotta get to work you, you got kids you got a job you gotta keep your health insurance right like you you, you can't you can't save every single facet right you can't stop climate change end racism uh you know get valve to fix every problem with the bots like you just it's too much it's too much and it's unfair to place this burden onto people when it's obvious they didn't create the problem and they're powerless to do anything about it I mean, the data is clear. Our society is one of vast inequality. Uh, and wealth is a, is one example, right? Certainly Jeff Bezos, if he chose, could end the Valve problem and make a serious dent in climate change. And probably in at least some unfair institutions, if he so chose, right? But the rest of us aren't Jeff Bezos. We don't have that kind of money. Uh, and we never will. Uh, but we also live in a society that's unequal in terms of power, right? Uh, we basically have a hundred senators uh, and uh, literally a handful of them have the ability to defeat major legislation. It's just sort of bizarre and bananas that we've taken about, I'm going to say around maybe 500 to 1,000 Americans uh, in the case of our country. And th they're the ones with the ability to pass laws. And this is one of the things that if you want to join me in my cynical corner, um, you may notice that a lot of the people who have the ability to pass laws will often make statements like, I support cause X or I stand with Y. Well, you don't stand with Y because I, I you know, you, I, the regular dude, the regular person, all that I can do is, is verbally state what I support, right? I can be like, oh, I support Ukraine, but like, I have a I have a wife, I have a job. I can't go and fight for Ukraine. I can't mail them an, an, an AR AR15, right? So 
that's the best I can do. But if you're a congressman, you can do more than that. That's what you're elected to do, you know? So, like, if you just start like, I stood with Ukraine, right? You know, I support such and such cause. And it's like, and then you don't put forth legislation to change it, or you don't support that legislation, then you're you're just a liar is what you are. So anyway, next time you hear a politician tell you what they support, see if it's aligned with their actions. Because, yeah, otherwise it's just a performance. And this is sort of like Valve being like, we are deeply concerned about the TF2 bot problem. It's like, no, 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 no. The players are deeply concerned about a TF2 bot problem. You can fix it. So you don't need to make statements, you know? Never even directly acknowledge that it's a problem. They've never talked about it. I mean, sure, they know, and they've made little band-aid fixes, and they've done stupid things like preventing free-to-play accounts from talking, but what has that done? It's done nothing. Sure, a, a total fix to this might take a while, but couldn't they do anything? Uh, couldn't they put matchmaking restrictions on accounts that get kicked from matches an excessive number of times in a short period? I, I know that- No, that wouldn't work, because the bots kick people. Human players do get kicked by bots sometimes, but you're not going to be kicked like 10 times in an hour. I don't know, they must be able to do something. Every few months we get, quote, security improvements, but it doesn't really seem to do anything. And look, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Nobody does. They could have a 100% foolproof fix up and running by tomorrow for all we know, but uh, somehow I doubt that. If this had been a continuous issue that they actually kept us up to date on the fact that they were doing something about, I think we could cut them a little bit of slack. But they haven't, and we should. Yeah, this is hard. Like, if you're, if you're gonna take action, you either need to show some results, or show some sort of effort. Valve's famous radio silence and lack of PR were annoying at the best of times, but now it's become really inexcusable. I think a lot of us went from having a pretty good view of Valve as a company to a straight up negative one over the past few years. Even before the bot problem, but that's definitely made it worse. And I'm sure there are people at Valve who do genuinely care, but their priorities are just on other things. Ultimately though, they're still totally okay just putting out community-made stuff every few months for some quick money, while the bots spam all sorts of terrible stuff on the chat and mic, and that just reflects very poorly on Valve as a company. A multi-billion dollar company. One that is not your friend. No matter how many times you invite Gabe Newell to your birthday party, he's not gonna show up. I mean, okay, I'm gonna... This is true, right? Though, I am always fluxumed by the idea that TF2 is one of it, it, so l l here i i got actually the player count pulled up here and as you can see when this game debuted or the earliest we have data for is that it was a sixty thousand player game a true mega hit right and you can see as the updates got pushed it maintained a pretty solid community fifty thousand actually grew you can see fifty thousand players just for years fifty thousand people Right, a, a massive, a massive amount for a game. Uh, it just stuck around, never really went anywhere for years. And they pushed updates, and then here we are to 2020. And look, it grew even bigger. People returned to the game. You can see it's grown by almost 20%. And then it even reached a, a, an unprecedented zenith of players. Though I think it's really worth pointing out that. I think this may be a false positive. And the reason is because basically we've had two years of the bot problem. So here's the last two years. You can see that there was something of an increase starting to happen. And but but if we look October 2020, you can see there was a big leap of about 5,000 players that peaked at around a leap of 30,000 new players. And what did that mean? Well, it coincided with the bots. So I wonder if these 30,000 other players aren't the bot accounts themselves. But still, it says that the player base is just probably as strong now as it's ever been. So why they aren't willing to invest in this game when so many other smaller studios with a fraction of the player base are absolutely willing to put in the work it's embarrassing for valve and it's questioning their like corporate decision making to be like hey this is an old product an old franchise but 
surely a game this easy you imagine would be or a game this old would be easier to patch than something with elaborate mechanics but maybe not maybe the programming is actually really really in depth and years and years of code stacked on code stacked on code make it tough but there has to be some sort of just to see valve trying right to make the bots at least at least have to redo their programming because the bots have to make be making someone money right they seem to advertise things sometimes but if you but they can't be making that much if you run ten thousand bots i'd be shocked if it makes if it gets 10 clicks to your link so in that case you think that even a small obstacle even a speed bump sized hurdle for the bots the bot net users to have to leap over is going to be sufficient to deter a lot of bots in the game i tried but i'm not here to just keep talking about how terrible things could be i actually think if we were to somehow ignore both the bots and valve's lack of attention and i know that's a big if but if we were to do that i think the tf2 community would actually be in a pretty decent state but the bots are obviously a huge problem and they can't really be ignored and i put a lot of thought into whether or not i should make something like this but after two years of bots controlling tf2 and making it literally unplayable at times I think maybe we're at a point where we need to make a big deal out of this. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's go back almost 10 years to when another Valve game community was mad about the fact that they didn't get an update. In 2013, when people were upset that there wasn't going to be a Diretide event for Dota that year, the whole Gib Diretide meme started and it got spammed everywhere. Now, this wasn't necessarily the best look for the Dota community. It just kind of made them look annoying and spoiled. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But you know what? It worked. They got their update, and maybe doing something similar for TF2 might make the community look kind of childish, but in my eyes, there's a pretty massive difference between being mad over the lack of a holiday update and getting the game to not be overrun by bots. Of course, we want updates too, but, you know, one thing at a time. So, here's what I did. I went to the people at Valve page and found every single one of them with a public email and sent them this. Header, TF2's rampant bot problem. Hi, you gotta say hi first. TF2's <laughs> bot slash cheater problem has been a major issue for two years now. Very little has been done to address this problem, and it hasn't been directly acknowledged by anyone at Valve or the TF2 team. If anyone at Valve could give the community an update on the situation, and let us know what's being worked on and when it might be fixed, that would mean a lot. And if this email could be forwarded or shared to anybody more directly involved with Team Fortress, that would be very much appreciated. Wow, what a professional email. Guys, I just want to point this out. You know, you can really get a lot further with professional uh, courteous uh, emails and messages than with vicious, virulent, toxic spam. I know this seems obvious, and yet toxic spam seems to be the default mode of communication on the internet. Thanks. There, it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. Uh, I even sent it to the big man Gabe himself. Is this email going to make a difference? Absolutely not. It will probably just be ignored. But what happens if they start receiving hundreds or even thousands of similar emails? Can they I mean, it's a testament to this game that despite the fact that the casual mode is literally unplayable, um, it still has tens of thousands of users engaging in the community. Uh, I think if they figured out a way to improve their monetization, um, I think it would make a monster difference, a monster difference, right? And because that's ultimately what this comes down to, unfortunately, whether you like it or not, you have to be able to extract continuous money from your game right it, it, the game has to be self funding if you spent if you have 3 devs working full time on this game then you have to justify 3 devs worth of salary in terms of income so that may mean that you know they have to design some new skins or raise their prices and you know i get it inflation's real it comes for us all and tf2 is still a really affordable game at baseline so i don't think i would have a problem with some pricier cosmetics excuse me entering the game ignore that too yeah they probably can and to be blunt they probably will but it becomes a lot harder to ignore and at this point what do we have to lose they already do nothing they can't do any less so we might as well try obviously not everyone at valve has worked on tf2 but ultimately there's not that many people at valve and they could forward emails easily enough now i'll have to point out what should be obvious but if you want to do this only contact work emails and be polite about it these are company contacts that are made public for a reason, and it's so that we could contact them. I'll leave my email linked in a comment if you want to just copy and- Oh, good. That's pretty classy. Paste it. Yeah, that's true. I really appreciate him acknowledging. I mean, here's the best part about the TF2 community that I think a lot of people don't appreciate, is that 
because it's a 10 year old game or more people are grown-ups they just are polite they understand that like this is how you have to navigate the world they're not dota 2 weirdos commenting on white house instagram posts begging for dire tide right that's that's the like juvenile teenager type of thing that makes you think that's how you affect change in the world but it's really not um you would be shocked at just how calling emailing trying to find the right person because somewhere there's someone with their finger on the switch there's someone at valve who can sit there and make a phone call and send an email and have a couple devs trying to solve this problem, right? Make it a priority. Someone sets those priorities. And the question is just getting in their ear and making the case to them that this is worth it, right? But it's gotta be worth it financially. That's ultimately what has to happen and that's how Valve has to operate. And I get it, Valve owns Dota, another massive, massive monetized franchise that dwarfs Team Fortress 2 in terms of daily active users, I think. But I would suggest just making the header about TF2 and bots and keeping the email relatively short. It's unfortunate that we'd have to resort to something like this, but again, this is a corporation and these are public work emails. And I've been kind of apprehensive about making a video like this because I'm, I'm in a position where I have, you know, somewhat of an audience. And I don't want this to be seen as attention seeking or having this revolve around me. I would hope that it would go beyond that. I put a poll out to kind of gauge interest on this and the overwhelming majority of people said it was worth a try. And I think the fact that the game's voice actors pretty much straight up said that we should make it known to Valve if we want something kind of sealed the deal for me making this. I'll be honest, I don't know how many people are going to watch this video. I love how the TF2 voice actors got roped into this. Like, imagine how stupid it is. You record a couple lines of dialogue for a few uh, 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 video games, literally no more. I th I'd say they've probably done like two hours of total voice work. And yet for 15 years, people are still pinging you, saying the lines like, I, I mean, I, I wonder if you're an actor, if this is like really wholesome, if it's like, wow, I have like real fans for my work, um, you know, because I'm sure a lot of actors never get much recognition at all. You know, they become their their alien number three in a Pixar movie or their, you know, uh, uh, talking dish rag in a Dawn commercial like you just don't get any recognition um just to have a role that people go wow that's like an icon you were you are have an iconic role like maybe that's a kind of a cool feeling for them so because I think a lot of people are just sick of bots and sick of hearing about plus if you're a voice actor like it's not like people are going to recognize you like you can't go out anymore because people will know that you're medic the bots and maybe if you did watch this you still think it's a stupid idea and maybe it is but we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas isn't really cutting it anymore I don't think that this is going to suddenly cause Valve to communicate more or actually have decent PR, but it might do something. And at this point, there's nothing to lose. If you think contacting gaming news sites would be more effective, uh, that's worth a shot too. In fact, if you want to leave some gaming news email addresses in the comments to, to contact, I say do it. Let's do it all. Let's start sending some emails. And I've never once done this. I've never been that good. I actually think that might be good, right? Like how I, I would love to know on Steam, uh steam's like ranking charts how popular is tf2 I, i'm literally looking this up now um steam active player count uh let's see okay let's see um steam charts tracking what's played okay so in terms of tracking what's played uh i don't know if this is top Steam charts, Steam's concurrent players, Counter Strike, Lost Ark. Oh, interesting. This I wonder when this is. Let's see. Uh, Elden Ring, Rust, Path of Exile, Team. Look at this. It's a top ten game. Guys, is this bananas or what? This is this is the number nine game in the entire Steam platform, and they can't fix it. Like, what is up with that? I mean, look. It's it's. It's outplaying Grand Theft Auto V in terms of daily uh, concurrent players. It, pretty bananas, honestly. I mean, this is the, to me, this is the story, right? Peak players, 94,000. I mean, yeah, right. It's a tenth of CSGO, sure. Um, but it's not even half of a game like Path of Exile that has a ton of 
updates, constant updates, significant ones at that. And Rust, same deal. Um, obviously, Elden Ring's brand new, but Pub PUBG, again, another like iconic um, game. Though this has you know probably six times the players. But yeah, I'm just I, I just remain like. Yeah, I think that's the story, right? That you have a top 10 Steam game uh, that requires a very simple fix, I think. I mean, it, it or would have a very simple fix in terms of identifying bot behavior, right? You could literally like have a, some sort of programming conditions where it's like if you get, you know, more than like 10 consecutive headshots, you're just booted. Right. Or your your hit percentage gets that high, you know, as a as class sniper, because let's be honest, all the bots, they engage in a simple repetitive behavior. They play sniper. They beautifully headshot time and time again. And it, you're like, OK, if you don't meet other conditions like you never advance, like you never play an objective or you never pick up ammo or a med kit. Something, something simple that almost every, even a brand new player would do just like accidentally. Um, you just boot them, right? Even a bad solution is better than the current state of no solution. Guy, but if this is something you agree with, you could maybe, you know, share this video. I think that's a story right there, that a, that a top 10 game is overrun by bots and Valve cannot bring itself to do anything about it. Or just spread the idea around about mass contacting Valve or mass contacting gaming sites. This video won't be monetized, so I'm not getting anything out of that. It's just, it's just about the principle of it. Or if you're also what a Chad a YouTuber of any size and agree with this, I say make a video about it too. The more people here, this is me making a video about it. Honestly, like I said, I, I think contacting them in a professional way to a public email that's you know is is a fine way to do it. I think ask telling gaming sites, hey, there's again in a professional way journal they're like hey did you know that a top 10 game on steam is totally overrun by bots and is being actually neglected by the devs despite it being their valve as far as i could tell the top game valve's top game in terms of play um uh, daily active players and yet they refuse to fix it i think that's at least a Listen, it's a, it's at least good for a slow news day on whatever your favorite gaming news site is. People that do it, the better. We all want Valve to do something, so let's be loud and make sure they know. It ultimately doesn't even matter if it works. You know, we tried. We could say we tried. We did all we could do. All right, that's all I got. We'll see what happens. So, uh... Yeah, other than that, man, just come on community servers. Community servers have been great to me. Like I said, I've never played a TF2 with an accessible casual mode, so... You know, I don't know what that's like. I just play community. Peace out, dogs. All right, cool. Guys, yeah. Um, I think, I mean, obviously, you've, you've, you've seen my journey in Team Fortress 2. You've seen my struggles and trials and tribulations with the botnet. So, obviously, I can't stand it either. I think reaching out to the devs politely, professionally, in a non-spammy way is not the worst idea. And I think asking politely, professionally, as telling game journalists, hey, listen, if it's a slow news day, there's this story, top 10 game on Steam, 50, 000, or almost 90,000 uh, unique users, and the devs are neglecting the game. Anyway, if you guys want some exclusive content, it's on the Patreon. Sometimes some stuff that's a little too edgy for YouTube. Anyway, have a good one. Thanks.